Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name's Joe. In this game, we'll be doing some gameplay for the game Valorant Victory Kursk. This is the newest DLC for the game uh, Valorant Victory, which is a tactical squad level combat um, game. So I originally was going to play the Prokhorovka scenario, but um, it keeps crashing on me uh, while the axis is moving in the first turn so that's obviously a, an issue when I'm trying to do a gameplay video so I'm gonna try a different scenario here so we will go back here to the Battle of Kursk in 1943 and uh, if you're not familiar with the campaign which I'm sure you are very large tank battle um, Depending upon who you ask, it is the largest tank battle in history. Some people say it is. Others say it's uh, Dubno in 1941 during Barbarossa. Um, but either way, it's an enormous tank battle. And so we will uh, we'll just take it, take it that way, right? Big battle. So uh, let's see. What do we... Well, let's play Tigers forward. Well, let's look at the order of battle. So this isn't a giant scenario we've got um our leaders nine rifle squads six panzer grenadier squads. so this is one of the new units for this dlc uh, here's another one the the tiger we have three tigers uh, there's a panzer 3j and a panzer 4d as well some support stuff a satchel charge some mg 34 some grenades etc right so on the uh, soviet side they actually have no armor, but they do have some uh, anti-tank guns. We've got this guy right here, the 76 millimeter. There's a couple of those, and they have a 57 millimeter as well. They've got two Maxim 1910s, the um, the machine gun that will just never go away, still being used today in the Ukrainian war by Ukraine. Um, invented in the 1880s by the British. This is a gun that's been around 140 years. Uh, water-cooled machine gun. I guess it's reliable and has a good rate of fire, so it's still useful today, even though it is, uh, of course, obsolete when compared to some of the uh, the more modern, current-day machine gun platforms. But anyway, that's a digression. So I apologize. We have the uh, we have nine rifle squads, seven half squads for the Soviets. They have uh, some light machine guns, some mortars, some anti-tank grenades, so that'll be useful. Um, and you know three three leaders now you can see the leaders this number up here is a is a modifier so you want it to be lower for a die roll modifier because this is a game where low die die rolls do better than high die rolls and you'll see they have a one minus one and two zeros on the axis side you can see they've got a minus two here at that and and then a couple of zeros and then Hassel and Meichner are both minus ones so and this is regular Wehrmacht. There are some SS in this game, and their counters are black. But um, this one does not have any SS. So we're going to start. This is going to be a fairly straightforward one. We'll be playing as the Axis. Fog of War is on, which means we'll have imperfect information. There will be some units, potentially, that we will not see. That can hit us with some nasty opportunity fire, etc. Um... No dice bias to favor it either side. It's an objective uh, scenario, so we have to control all the objectives at the end of the last turn to win. It's only seven turns, so that's another one, another point in its favor for doing a playthrough video because it's going to be one of the shorter scenarios. So we'll just get started here. So we start on the axis turn. We're zoomed in. You can zoom in really tight. <laughs> that's Bondarev, Bondarev, obviously. Um, and then you can zoom out as well. The map is not, it's a single map, so relatively small. This is based on a tabletop game, so this would be, you know, a nice small, probably 11 by 17 map or something like that, if it was on the tabletop. Um, so this will be a probably a fairly quick one. This is a tough game to play on the offensive. Uh, some of the reviews on Steam will, Mention that you know it's really hard with terrain modifiers and things to um, to get defenders out of positions, and I can understand the frustration with that. I would also say that you know 
I guess that's a, it depends on your viewpoint, really. But, you know, some games are better at modeling, you know, the fi- the find, uh, find, fix, flank, finish kind of sequence of, you know, tactical infantry where you kind of, you want to, you know, find your enemy, fix them by fire, keep them pinned, flank them, and then come in for close assault and finish them off, right? That's the kind of the, the paradigm. And some games do that better than others, but, um, you know... So we'll see how things go. I've played this game some, and I, I think it's you know it's enjoyable. I don't have any major issues with how it does things. Let's put it that way. So we're in the command phase where if we had some, we could do airstrikes or our off-board artillery, off-board mortar. You can lay smoke. You can swap support weapons, and it does have you know tooltips that pop up if you hover long enough. So as it's as you can see, it says swap weapons between selected units. You can merge uh, half squads into full and vice versa. You can collapse this if you don't really need it um, and then bring it back by clicking the triangle there. And then this is our line of sight. So you use this and then you click on a hex and you can see its line of sight. So quick line of sight check, right? So we've got kind of a, a hill here that blocks line of sight going in this direction. So we know who can see whom and therefore can uh, attack them. So in a lot of your turns, you're not going to have much to do in the command phase unless you're, you know, wanting to split your squads or merge squads. Or in the bigger scenarios, you will have some airstrikes, you will have some off-board artillery and off-board um, mortars and so on. Uh, the smoke you can actually lay with your own mortars. So we should have me. I don't remember actually if we have mortars, but the, but the Soviets do. So we're going to move to the fire phase. Now, here in the fire phase, if you have a unit that has the range, like say one of these tanks, right? They may have the range, yeah. So now you can see here, it'll show you if you hover over a target, what the diro modifiers will be. So that's a plus seven because it's in a building and um, we've got a lot of degrading terrain in between us. We've got those fields right here. We've got these, I don't know, groves or whatever these are, trees. And so that's a big modifier. That's a that's a plus eight. This one they can't see apparently. And then down here we get a plus eight. So we can fire at them anyway, but I'm not going to because then I you know I want to be able to move them up basically. Um, they do have anti tank guns. I don't see them. So again, we may have fog of war. They could be sitting somewhere, hidden from view. And, you know, so you have to be a little bit careful and I may try to flush them out by moving my infantry up first, but that's in the next phase. So I'm not going to do anything. We're going to go to the movement phase. Um, and then you have various controls. So if you had trucks, you can load or, or t you know, towed guns, you could tow them or load your infantry onto trucks or APCs, etc. cetera. Um, this one will let you move units off map if because in some scenarios you may there you know one of your victory conditions may be cross the map and exit um you can do uh assault movement so assault movement they get have but they get plus one cover so it's a way to kind of move up but you're moving up in a way that you're not going to be as exposed right it's kind of like a crawl kind of thing I mean, it's more like a hunched over, I think, is really what it is. But um, it's something to, to use, just keeping in mind that it's going to have your movement factor. So just to show, right, if we click this guy right here, now you can see the movement cost. You can see this lit up, so it's now eligible for this. So his movement factor um, is going to be halved if I use this. Right, so let's let's use it just so we can demonstrate. Right, so he's in assault move now. We move him up here, and that's it. He's done. Right, but now if we look at his line of sight from up here, it's still because of the the ridge. He still doesn't have visibility up here. Once we move him up one more hex, he's going to have visibility on this little town here, and we can we can take advantage of that. So let's turn this off, and we'll dem try and demonstrate this. Let's move him up here, and then here. And now if we use this, and now we got fired on, of course. But again, high is better. And they get a one, minus one dyro modifier for opportunity fire. But here on our chart, we can see you get the firepower, which is here. 
and then the die roll goes here after it's modified. So he rolled a 10, which is bad. You don't want to roll high in this game. You want to roll low. With the minus one, it turns into a nine where the two, um, two things intersect. That's your, that's your result, right? So, you know, some of this stuff, like if he had rolled a three and got DRM down to a two, with that firepower, that would have been devastating for us. So that's why you do assault move because you have you get a plus one on your on your DRM, which would eliminate this opportunity fire, which could make all the difference, right? So I'm not. Well, let's just talk line of sight again. Now we can see everybody. I mean, we can't see behind these buildings, of course, but we can see this guy out here, which was kind of hidden before, and there's a gun underneath him. You can see the corner of it kind of turned. That's where one of their anti-tank guns is, so that's good. Again, what, what I'm thinking here is we use our infantry to find out where their guns are. And then I can use that knowledge to employ my tanks in a way that they're not going to get popped right away. You know, So that's the idea at least. So I'm going to leave this guy here for now. Um... Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I move him up one more. Well, let's see what our line of sight is if we come down off the... Okay, yeah, that works too. All right, so maybe... Let's uh, let's do it. Let's move him down. Now he draws, draws fire here. Again, they're going to get a minus one, so we took casualties. So that's and now if you were to move into this, you're in a, a lane of fire and you're going to get chewed up. So you're not, you know, that's a something to consider, right? So we'll just move this guy up here and then move him here. And now we can move to this spot and draw draw his fire again and again. It's going to be bad. So we lost an entire squad there with with that move. But again, this is, you know, I'm not trying necessarily to play smart. I'm playing more to demonstrate things, I guess. But that was dumb. <laughs> so don't do stuff like that. Uh, so here we have a nice big stack. And let's move this guy into our field here. Now this actually cuts line of sight. Um, well, it doesn't cut line of sight. What it does is it will um, degrade. It's a it's a plus it's a plus DRM. So you're going to get a plus one, I believe, for being in this uh, green. And they continue to roll low, but with see we got plus one for being in the orchard, and a plus one for the line of sight. So he actually missed. We'll stop there. And I'm going to stop that guy there. And we're going to do that. Now the tanks, this is where things are tough. So if we zoom in here, we've got, here's our all of our armor lined up. So we've got our Panzer three. we've got our Panzer six. So the tig we've got three, we got Tiger, 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 and a Panzer four. So you can see kind of the ratings here. The higher the letter, the thicker the armor. So the, the three, as you would expect, has lower armor than the tiger does. And the firepower is here. And of course, the tiger has better firepower than these guys right here. And then this is, this is machine guns. So you have a turreted machine gun, which is on the turret, I guess. And then you have your hull machine gun which is a uh, firing arc. So you do have, this is a, this is a unit. Well, all the tanks, all the armor has obviously pretty good punch, but they are extremely vulnerable to anti-tank guns. And we know the Russians have two. So let's see if we can figure out and here they fired on it. And he rolled a four, which is bad. And oh, that's destroyed. Yep. All right. Well, we know where the other gun is now. Um, even though it disappeared, it's it's in here somewhere. 
All right, so. That's a 10. So that's going to be a miss. So that's this gun here. And we'll stop. Oh, one thing to mention is if you click on the help here on this elimination table, and the same thing with um, with you know uh, anti personnel fire, it'll show you uh, you know basically it'll explain how everything works combat wise with your armor rating and your AT FP. So um, in this game, AT FP is your anti tank firepower, and AP FP, which you might, in my head, it always does this armor piercing. It's not what it is, it's anti personnel. So anti personnel is a number, and anti tank is a letter. And so you'll see your, your, and then your armor rating, and you can see like U, I think, is unarmored. Then you have A, B, C, D, E, F. Like I said, it goes up. The higher the letter, up to F. So F is the thickest armor in the game. The Tigers, as we saw, have an E. The uh, the three and four have a C, and our three is already dead. Um, so, yeah. And the same is true when you do uh, anti-personnel fire. So now we're going to go to their defensive fire phase, and so now they'll be able to shoot at us. That's a mess. Mm, that's a mess. So now we have advance and assault phase, right? So you can move everybody up one pretty much. Like we can do this if we want to. And as long as they're not pinned. This guy's already out in the open, so we're going to move him up. And that might be all I do. Well, we can move this guy into the orchard, I guess. And then we'll move this guy. I think that's all I'm going to do. Yeah. All right. So now it's their turn. So they're going to do their command, their fire. So they'll be firing at us again. So as you can see, when, when people complain about how tough it is to attack in this game, they're right. It is tough. Um, but you could also make the argument that it should be tough, right? And they're missing too. I mean, they, they are, in, they, had, they have and they will continue to, and they just rolled good enough to get a Valor. So this makes this unit tougher. So they're rolling pretty well. And the AI, in my opinion, in the game rolls pretty well in general. You can see that a lot of these are lower rolls. Um, so now they're in their movement phase. And your units will do opportunity fire automatically. So the AI is doing its thinking. We have a unit that popped into view there. Okay, so now we're in the defensive fire phase. So now we get to shoot back. All right, so let's start up here, I guess. Let's see what our Panzer, what our Tiger can do. So that's a plus three, this is a plus four. So this seems like our best option is this guy right here. We can't can't hit this guy so we're gonna we're gonna try to hit this guy and probably won't no that's way too high yeah see we roll nines and tens and they roll fives and sixes that's one of the things that's a little frustrating <laughs> go 
Come on, man. Give me something. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they don't have line of sight, I guess. No. Does anybody have line of sight to that gun? Yes, but he's out of range. Okay. Good to know. They can't see us either. And we're not going to hit anything. <laughs> Have I rolled? <coughs> Have I rolled anything less than like a nine? Hey, a four. We actually pinned them. Amazing. So he doesn't have visibility on those guys, really? Oh, he's out of range, I guess. Although, well, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. This won't hit either. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So I don't think they're gonna move anybody, but maybe they will. All right, so we rallied, which is, you know, helpful. We still don't really have anything to do um, in command phase, although I can look and see to see we don't have anybody we should be combining. Uh, nope, all right. So we will move on to the fire phase. See if we can roll anything low this time. <laughs> this is terrible. That's a good roll. Now we're doing something here. That's good. Try this guy. No. Ugh. All right. So you'll notice I didn't. I didn't use my tanks. And there is a reason. Why do they always roll low? <sighs> That's just so frustrating.
Well, if he can survive, we now have an opportunity to knock this gun out. another gun in here I think it's like here because it killed our Panzer 3 up here <laughs> um, hmm. well I'm gonna play fast and loose here and just take a shot at this and hope for the best and I'm probably gonna get destroyed I think that gun is here. So, all right, that's the end of my move. Now they get their defensive fire. All right, keep rolling high. Could be worse. All right, I'll take that. They're moving, which they won't really move, but defensive fire. Now I can take a crack at this gun. And it's in a bunker, plus three. So I have to roll really low here, which I almost certainly will not. Oh, they're both in there. Oh, that's right. You get to pick which kind of ammunition. So when you're firing at, obviously, a, um, a gun or infantry, you want to use your HE ammo. And if you're firing at a tank, you want to use an armor piercing. So we will go with that one. 
Got to roll low, and it's seven is too high. So, yeah, good stuff. I hate seeing those 11s, man. It's like, seriously? Uh, trying to wedge this guy out of here. And he refuses to go. This guy, now he's by himself, move him in with these guys. Or vice versa. Uh, no. 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 Okay. Fire phase. <laughs> Eleven. I love rolling those elevens, man. Well, it's not gonna hit anyway. I'll probably roll an eleven. Might as well have been. For all the good it did. enough. Well, we can try. It's going to take a damn miracle to hit it, but. Oh, <laughs> and it's still only a pin. Oh, all right, but that helps because now we can move our our other tiger up. Look at this. Look at 
I'll stop right there. And we'll take this guy. Alright, let's do this. I know he's going to draw fire. I knew that was going to happen. I would, this is a calculated risk that didn't work. So my thinking there was if I move him in here and he survives, then I can move these guys up and combine them, which obviously didn't work. And now because there's a fire lane there, I can't move this guy there. So not, uh, not the result I was really looking for, obviously. So that's going to end that. I'm not going to move this guy. I don't, well, yeah, maybe I will. I'll just move him there and stop. Because if he can get into the grove, then that, um, that's better. here uh, da, 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 I don't know if I'm gonna do anything else I'm tempted to move this tank here but I don't know if that's a good move or not Fortune favors the bold. This could be really dangerous. They rallied. That's what I was hoping would not happen. Everybody rallied. I was hoping the gun would stay suppressed, but it didn't. Interesting that he shot at that tank. Too much to hope for. I can't knock that stupid gun out.
Finally. All right. Uh, advance and assault phase. All right. Rally, rally. So now we can combine. So that's how we combine. All right. Fire phase. Let's hold off on that one for a minute. See if we can do something here. Oh, that's interesting. He didn't rally. <laughs> 10. Come on, man. Well, that makes up for it. So that's good. So I think that will be all we're going to do now. So now I'm going to take this guy and we're going to go. Salt, or at least try to. But let's move this tank up too. I guess he can assault. Yeah, I guess tanks can't do it. I wasn't sure about that. I wasn't sure that would actually work anyway, but it was worth a try. Okay, I can't move either because of this. So we know their other gun is here. Killing these guns, man. Because if I can kill the guns, that takes a lot of the punch away, and I might be able to do something. Um, maybe. We'll see. 
So who do we want to advance? What do we have here? I have a full squad and a half squad. But we lose cover if I move up. And we know that they're going to be on the offensive next turn. Which is why I'm reluctant to move. Um, all right, let's do this. Let's move him here and move him here. And I think that's all I'm going to do. Yes, so now it's their turn. We'll see what they do. They roll low and wipe out some of my units course. Sitting literally right next to him. This is so frustrating. Hallelujah. See, it encourages assaulting, but to get close enough to assault is almost impossible. And our objective hexes are here and here, I think. And, oh, and over, over here. So we have one, two, three objective hexes that I can see. And we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. I mean, there's probably a strategy that works better than this, which uh, I'm probably overly cautious, I guess. But this is just brutal. Like, you roll 11s. You saw how many times I rolled 11s. It's freaking pathetic. no DRM on this that's interesting Ugh, rolled a nine are you kidding me that was one where if I could have rolled well I would have destroyed that unit and they have a mortar which would have been nice to wipe that out fire that much I guess we have to start trying to move up let's see if we can take a crack at maybe maybe pinning these guys we need to roll low yes 
well we didn't we didn't pin them but we did enough casualties that their their firepower is down all right now we can maybe do some stuff here what's he got he's just a leader which is fantastic Uh, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. Five? Seriously? Oh, because of the wire. Ugh, damn it. This is brutal. was hoping to see there i was trying to sneak around but um yeah they rolled well so well now we can do this Screw this up. No, that is a blind spot. Actually, this one is too. I'll keep that in mind for next turn. Alt, four to one odds. Took him. Can I roll low this time? Oh, come on. A nine? Seven is the most common result on a D on two D6, and yet I cannot roll. Uh, actually, that looks like in that image that's a D6 and maybe a D eight or something. It's more than a six, it looks like. But And an 8. Well, 
knock them out anyway. Nope. <laughs> As usual. All right. Well, we only have a couple turns left here. So I'm not going to I'm not going to capture any of the objectives. So this maybe will be my last my last turn here. I don't really see uh, any point in continuing. And as you can see, when you continue to roll like nines, tens, elevens, you're not going to do anything. Like eight. Yeah. You know, really. So we'll just uh, make as many casualties as we can. bad mm, I really needed that to do something because if I could pin these guys then these guys could move up and assault move under fire which is probably going to result in not being good but it is what it is I think yeah if I move this guy here then these guys can obviously fire at him but that might be the only one that could no this one can too well got to do what you got to do man we can at least take one of these hexes see if we can maybe make them shoot at somebody else the answer to that is yes and this is gonna be bad but we'll do that uh, unfortunately that means this guy now goes out into the fire lane and this one still hasn't fired Ugh. All right, maybe we try to use our panzer.
Come on, seriously? <laughs> Give me a break. Do I ever roll a three? I guess I have, but it doesn't seem like it happens very often. That is such bull. That is such bull. Ugh, that was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome! Well, we captured one. <sighs> Ridiculous. <laughs> of course, snake eyes. Yeah, three. That's awesome. How about that? Ridiculous, man. Totally ridiculous. Oh look, we just missed doing some damage. Isn't that amazing? Oh, and we rolled a nine. How surprising. Yeah, I'm jaded, what can I say? Hmm. Well, my immobile tank here has uh, well, he does have line of sight for that guy, I guess, but that's so far away, it's not going to do anything. And that's that, I guess. Well, last turn. Might as well play it out just to see what happens here, I guess. I mean, obviously we're not going to win. We've got like hardly any units left as well, so you know. And we can't do any damage to them. I feel like if this was a 10-turner, maybe I would actually have a chance. Maybe. They still have one gun. And I'm down to two tanks. 
I mean, one is basically a gun platform at this point that doesn't, that's in and out of the way spot, which has no real shot at anybody, so. Um, yeah, well. We'll let them do their thing. They'll shoot at us, maybe blow something else up. Maybe not. Dead. Oh, we missed. All right, the plus two. I forgot the plus two die roll modifier. Defensive fire phase. So let's see if we can kill anybody else before the end of. The scenario. Sight there? Really? Huh. I guess it's up the spine, maybe? Well, it's center to center, so there to there. I guess it crosses this building hex. That sucks. Because we know he can't see it either, so we'll take a crack at a long distance shot and a roll of 10 or something. Oh, a 4. Well, we did destroy one more unit, so that's good. Yeah, if we needed, we needed probably three more turns. If this was a 10 turn or I'd win this thing. I might limp home with one Panzer Grenadier and a Tiger or something, but I'd win it. <laughs> Defeat. Yes, defeat. They lost 79% of their forces and I lost 59%. But we didn't do much. We captured one of the objectives. So, so that is going to do it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been Hexed Encountered. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, at least more than I did getting my butt handed to me. So I think the, the takeaway from that is that you need to be more aggressive. And yes, I got chewed up and I would have gotten chewed up even more by being aggressive. But you have to try to, to push because otherwise it's, I mean, I guess I could have tried to flank them. Go to the south and come around from behind or something. Those initial spots were hard to, it was hard to clear those guys out. So that's going to do it. Uh, thank you for watching. As always, uh, please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. If you have any comments, questions, etc., feel free to post them up. But otherwise, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, until next time, my name's Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. Happy gaming.